Hello, this is Maker J here. One, here's a pretty old AT&T phone. Um, it's just a it would have a cord, um, but it was made in 1991. Um, and I just thought I'd uh, make a video of this um, because the circuit board had a ton. I totally took everything off this circuit board. This is the actual keypad circuit board. There's a few LEDs on there. I still need to get off. Um, but yeah, I took everything off of this circuit board. Um, because it was so old, it mostly had just transistors. Those are all the transistors from one phone. Um, but there's, they're all general purpose ones, most of them. So there's like 2N, 3904s, um, a lot of those, and a lot of, uh, the 2N, 3906s. So there's PNP and NPN. These ones are PNP here and these are NPN. But, so if you find one of these phones, I'll definitely t um, recommend taking it apart. It has a lot of good transistors in it. This is the main chip. I'm not really sure what that is, but probably some sort of a uh, um, logic chip. Probably a basic one. Um, and then these, I think these are amplifiers here. There's two of those. And two of these little white ones that are just marked 4 and 2.6. So, not really sure what those are. But here's all the resistors that I got out of it. A large amount of, um, fairly, uh, or, um, yeah, a lot of, uh, different types in there. Not, not just, like, 10Ks. There's, like, everything in there. But, yeah, so a lot of components. A lot of capacitors, too. And there was also two very nice, large, biggest I've ever seen, um, piezoelectric discs but I have an LED hooked up there and it flashes when you tap on it I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can see that in the video um, but yeah there was two piezoelectric discs there um, yeah that's a really good jackpot um, but I also perfected um, my way for getting resistors off circuit boards because they always bend them over and the leads when and then they snip them off so it's really hard to get them out and I've burned my fingers a ton of times trying to um, grab the um, resistor and then pull it out while it's heating up and I've burned my fingers so many times doing that so I figured out a better way to do it when they're bent over like that um, let me put the camera on the tripod here so basically what I do is I've got wait a minute where did I put it okay so I have this as just a um, probe for a voltmeter um, and it's really sharp point but what I do is I stick that behind one side and then I take my um, let me get my soldering iron cleaned off here okay so I take my soldering iron which um, this is the one that I you just bent the tip over so that it um, can get in small places so I heat it up on one side and then stick this and just pry it off on one side so now that you could just grab this with your fingers and then unsolder, but your fingers are probably going to still get burnt. So, or you could grab it with pliers, but usually crush them. So I made up this little tool. It's just a random piece of metal. I cut some slots in it. So you just insert this around the component and then heat it up on the back and it pops out. And I always have, I have a box underneath of it and they fall into the box. So that's how I get the components off. It's really simple. So yeah, it's easy as that. So yeah, I hope that you found that interesting. Um, that's about it. Um, I still have to make my lead alum battery. I still haven't got around to doing that yet. I just haven't had enough time. Um, and I also want to try some more capacitor experiments. I want to try using oil as a dielectric and see if I can still, if, if I, when I take the one um, side of the capacitor out, and then put it back in if there's still charge. Um, I don't know if it'll work or not, but if the charge is stored on the dielectric, then it shouldn't have a charge when I put it back in. That's my theory anyway. I don't know if it's true or not, but um, um, I also took apart this little, I have another one here, these little printers, um, like a uh, receipt printer. This is the main, uh, but it's just got a little magnetic um, got a bunch of coils in there, and it shoots the needle things out and puts the ink onto the paper. Um, but it has a, this is the circuit board from it. 
has a weird voltage regulator on there, a very large old voltage regulator. It's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Oh, and I'm also thinking more about the Sterling engine. I think I'm going to use whipped cream cans this time. Let's see, those these beer cans fit really nice in there. They go down real slow. A lot of, uh, very close. So it's like probably a millimeter on each side. So that should work really good as a stirring engine. I just have to figure out how to connect the two cans together. That's the only thing I haven't figured out. I might try soldering them this time. I don't know. Because JB Weld is kind of messy. And then if you mess up, it's kind of hard to get it back apart. Whereas the solder, you can heat it up again and get it apart. So, I don't know. Um, that's what's been happening. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching.